Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Efficient Practice Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Evelyn Samuel. And I wanted to come on and do this episode, which is entitled About Me. The Efficient Practice Podcast is a podcast where I will be bringing on some of the top business gurus in the industry. Not necessarily in dentistry. Uh, they're going to be from a, a vast majority or array of different professions so that we can hone in on what it is that makes them have successful businesses. I will also bring on top people in the dental industry so that people are, who are listening, who are dentists, who want to become dentists, will be able to uh, appreciate the clinical as well as the business aspect, knowing the business aspect of dentistry. Uh, Because after all, we're clinicians, but we're also oftentimes solo practitioners and small business owners. And we don't always have that training when we are in dental school, uh, when we graduate from dental school. So I wanted to do this episode about me so that the listeners could learn about my story, about my why, about my purpose, and why I started this show. So it starts off many, many years ago when I was a little girl. I was about five years old, and I decided that I was going to be a dentist when I grew up. There were no other dentists in the family. Uh, I am the first uh, medical uh, doctor in our family. And so I had this dream, if you may, of becoming a dentist one day in everything that I wrote, all of my uh, predictions, all of my quotes, all throughout school said one day I was going to become a dentist. And so I planned my life accordingly through elementary school, middle school, high school, uh, taking the curriculum, uh, the advanced curriculum so that I could prepare to go through the channel and just kind of plan my, my whole life. I uh, went to college, majored in pre-dental, pre-med, uh, was fortunate enough to do a summer uh, program at Marquette University, which was uh, dental related and, and for people who were interested in, in the field of dentistry. So I was on this track of becoming a dentist. I was doing everything I was supposed to do. And when I graduated from college, I was accepted. I was actually accepted into five dental schools. Uh, All of the dental schools that uh, basically I applied for, I was accepted to. And so the journey began. I went to dental school. Uh, Those of you who are listening that are dentists know that dental school can be uh, quite challenging. We're really busy. We're learning to be doctors. And the curriculum is jam-packed, but I remember thinking, well, this is what I've always wanted to do. Uh, There was no plan B. It was just one plan. I was going to be a dentist, and failure was not an option, and there was no plan B, and this was what I had always wanted to do, so this was what I was going to do. And I remember thinking, you know, this is par for the course. This is how it's supposed to be. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And this is just part of the dues you have to pay to do what you want to do in life. And and I just remember thinking, when I get into private practice, everything is going to be better. And it's going to be this wonderful uh, career that I I dreamed of. I'm going to have a comfortable life. I'll get to help people. And so I, that was my thought process. And that was what I had planned to do my entire life. And, And so I matriculated through the dental program. And then I graduated. I decided to do a one-year residency in advanced education in general dentistry because when I finished dental school, I felt very prepared to go out and treat patients. I I went to the University of Alabama School of Dentistry, a very good school, and I felt very prepared when I left uh, UAB or the University of Alabama School of Dentistry. I felt very prepared and I was ready, but I didn't really know where I wanted to live. So I wanted to buy a little more time and I did a residency. Uh, The residency I did was really good if I was planning to do, let's say if I was going to do academia or teach, it was good to have that under my belt. So I did a residency in Washington, uh, D.C., Howard University College of Dentistry. And after that, I started doing some independent contracting. I was in the D.C. metropolitan area, which is the most powerful city in in the world. And there was just so much to do. And I love the city. 
But something interesting happened. I finished the program. I started working as a contractor and I was working in so many different practices at one time. My loans were starting to kick back in and that financial responsibility started kicking back in and going to dental school is, is it really expensive. So I got out, I had all these loans. I start working in a bunch of different practices at one time because the practices that I was in, while I really liked them, they didn't really have enough patience to, to keep me at one particular pace full time. So I basically worked on Mondays and Wednesdays with an HMO practice. On uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I was with a cosmetic dentist. And on Fridays and Saturdays, I worked with a prosthodontist. And then just to make ends meet, I was working in all these different places. And I still was just barely able to make ends meet. I was doing retail at night uh, and on the weekends. So I, I just realized that I, I was, you know, not making enough. I'd spent a lot of years uh, in dental school. A lot of my peers had started their lives and I was still in school becoming a doctor, uh, borrowing a whole lot of money. And I just started to kind of resent what uh, I was doing. I started to question this dream, this lifelong dream that I had, like, what have I done? Um, What am I supposed to do with all this debt? And I just felt this overwhelming burden of, you know, is this really what I wanted to do? And in, in, in how was this shaping up? How was this working out for me? And uh, just questioning my life's desire, my life's plan, my life's preparation of becoming a dentist and, and you know, ultimately a doctor. And so I had to have, you know, some, some really in-depth, um, reflective moments to just kind of figure out something better because I was miserable working in all those different places. Now, don't get me wrong. I had some wonderful experiences in all of those offices. I I learned a a lot of different things. I learned how to go in any environment uh, and, uh, and just be able to pick up and pick up their techniques. I was able to pick up business uh, techniques because I learned in all of these different places that the clinicians were wonderful. A lot of them didn't have systems in place to run their businesses. So I started watching and taking elements from each of these practices. And this would, would shape me for my future practice. I didn't know it at the time. And I couldn't really appreciate it because I was so overworked. But this was the best experience that, that I could have had. And so from that, I always say, you know, you learn two things in every situation. You learn what to do, what not to do. And every experience is a learning experience. And so uh, as I was in that, that, that element of, of just kind of working all the time, going from practice to practice, couldn't really appreciate it, but it was shaping me. It was shaping my business savvy and my clinical, uh, uh, my clinical, my clinical skills from working with different specialists and different practitioners um, for the future. So it was really a good experience in hindsight. Hindsight is 2020. Uh, but I worked in all those places and then I got to a point where it was still a bit overwhelming just to be in a different practice every day. And so I got an opportunity to move back to Alabama, which is where I'm from. I moved back to uh, Birmingham, Alabama, which is where I went to dental school and I worked for a group practice there. There were five dentists who owned the practice and they invited me back to kind of work in their practice and be the only full-time dentist because they all did a few hours a week. And so I moved back and and, uh, even there I was able to learn quite a bit and I was able to see uh, elements in their practice that they didn't have in place in terms of systems for, for their practice. Uh, And it also allowed me to kind of be in a practice and run it as if it were my own because I was the only full-time person there. And so I was there for about three years and then I decided to open my own practice. So each stage was getting, you know, better. It was getting better and better. Uh, And I decided to open my own dental practice and I, I planned for two years, every single detail before I opened the doors of my practice. I researched everything and I also uh, hire coaches, uh, uh, business coaches before I open the doors of my first practice. And even with that, they still 
uh, while they were good in certain aspects um, at what they did and for what I approached them for, they still did not walk me through the steps of how to set up a practice, how to build it, how to negotiate uh, my lease, how to negotiate with my contractors, how to find a space, how to find uh, a, a contractor or a um, commercial realtor. And there was just all these elements that I had to learn uh, basically by trial and error. I had to learn by uh, researching myself and I had to learn as I went because I didn't learn these things in dental school. So I, I'm coming full circle now to, to say why I created this show. I created it because I, I definitely want uh, the new dentist or people who are in practice to know that there is a better way, that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, that you can learn things before you're in a situation and not have to uh, learn by trial and error or by going to the school of hard knocks and just things kind of happening and you learn from that experience. Uh, you're going to learn more when you're in private practice and you're in situational uh, occurrences well, why not be prepared, you know? And so I, I wanted to create something that I can bring experts on that are experts in business. Because like I said, in dental schools, most dental schools, you don't get business. There are some programs that may have a dual program, but for the most part, most people, you know, don't learn the business of dentistry. And so I wanted to bring experts on the show in business. They won't all be dentists. They'll be from different fields and they can show how or better techniques and better ways so that we as private practitioners and owners of practices, and even if you're not an owner, if you're, you're in dentistry, you can navigate your path better so that you can have a better quality of life as well as help your patients uh, in, and just have a better business and practice, but also have a better quality of life. And so that's my ultimate why of why I started this show. Um, I, I started my practice in, and I found out quickly that I did have uh, business savvy and that I, I research everything and that I use uh, business uh, coaches pretty much my entire uh, practice career now, almost uh, 20 years uh, into practicing. And there were some pearls that I was able to put in place to make my practice operate in the top one percentile of practices. And I want to share that with listeners. I want to share that with new dentists. I want to share that with people so that they can uh, have a better experience and not have to learn by trial and error. So uh, this is a little bit about uh, my journey of becoming a dentist. Uh, I guess my why now is different than my why was uh, way back when. I now have a family. I have a wonderful husband and two beautiful children. So my why is uh, centered around my family. And so my goals for my practice now are different than they were before. And I want to encourage uh, listeners and dentists to come up with your why and determine why it is what uh, you do what you do and what it is you want to accomplish out uh, from your life and from your practice and begin with why. Uh, begin with why and, and determine what it is and how it is that you want to practice and how you want to live your life and have a better practice and a better quality of life. And I am here to help you do that. So uh, if you have not joined our free uh, Facebook group for uh, this podcast, it's called Efficiency Now Network. And on there, it is a group of dentists and we can all come together and help each other with uh, different things, different life things, becoming better, uh, having better systems, having a better practice, having a better quality of life, uh, different techniques and materials. So there will be dentists on there that will be sharing their experiences and their journeys, uh, experts uh, in business. And so I want us to all come together and that's the Efficiency Now Network. Uh, the podcast will be coming on in this, uh, this video format as well as the, the traditional podcast. Uh, if you could just like our, our episodes, uh, leave us a comment, and you can follow uh, me on uh, different social media uh, uh, rev uh, avenues or, or mediums. 
Our website is info, well, the email is info at dreveleynteaguesamuel.com. The website is dreveleynteaguesamuel.com, as well as efficiencyinstitute.com. So uh, uh, this podcast, Efficient Practice Podcast, is for you if you're striving for an efficient practice. And there's a double entendre there. It's an efficient dental medical practice. Or if you're using efficient practices to run your business better, this podcast is for you. I want you to stay tuned. There'll be plenty of shows that are going to have a ton of value and some, some really great uh, uh, people on the show. So this is Dr. Evelyn Samuel signing off for Efficient Practice Podcast. I can't wait to share this journey with you. And I will see you the next time. Take care. And until then, bye-bye.